Beginning New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. We appreciate you tuning in with us on tonight. For we are here for no other reason but to uplift the name of Jesus. Our scripture tonight is coming from Psalm 146, 1 through 2. And it reads, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. This scripture says, as long as God gives me breath in my body, as long as I exist on this earth, I'm going to praise him and give him all the glory and all the honor because of the great things that he has done in my life. So come on with me and let's give him glory and honor. The song says, I just want to praise you forever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. I just want to thank you. I just want to serve you. I just want to bless your name on today on Jesus. Help us sing. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory. just want to thank you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. just want to serve you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. just want to bless you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to come before you to study your word. We thank you, Father God, that you are holy and we are unholy. We thank you, Lord, that you are God and we are not God. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us once again to study your word and that your word will be made real to us. Now, Father, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, bless our lives, that we will continue to study your word, and your word, Father God, will speak to us. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen.
and thank God. Amen. And thank the name of God. And all, they all belong to me. Thank you, Jesus, for a bless. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing for blessing me. Hallelujah. We thank God for another privilege. Another honor, another great opportunity to come before him on tonight and to study his word. His word is like medicine to our souls, medicine to our flesh. We thank God for this privilege. We will be here again tonight, <clears throat> Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse number 14 through 19. Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 through 19 is where we are tonight, and we will be looking Again, to see what Paul says in the book of Philippians unto us. Amen. We thank God for this study that has been going on for quite some time. We thank God for speaking to us. So we're in Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 through 19 again. We ended last week with Philippians chapter 4 and somebody's favorite verse, verse number 13. We ended last week with verse number 13 and some people just get happy when they hear verse 13, and I'm glad about it. I'm glad you get happy also when you look at verse number 13. But let's look at verse 13 again. Some people uh, just rejoice when they hear it. Let me give you a chance to rejoice again on tonight. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 13, Paul says, he, he ends this pericope. We went to ver from verse 10 through 13 on last week. Um, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. On well, last week, we, we had you to know that Paul was talking to the church at Philippi, and he was saying to that church over and over again, thank you. He was saying thank you to them. He was saying thank you to them for, for them partnering with him in ministry. He was saying thank you to them for their gifts toward him in ministry. And he was saying thank you to them for their fellowship that they had one to the other with him. And he comes again tonight to say, look, I know other churches have not given to me in my ministry. I know other churches have not fed me the way you have. Other churches have not given me financial gifts the way you have. He says, if you keep on giving, God will bless you but just remember one thing, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's saying to all the churches that had not given, plus the church here at Philippi who has given, he's saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can do it with your gift and I can do it without your gift. That's why it's important for preachers to never preach for financial gain, simply because when you preach for financial gain, you do not get the blessings of the Lord that usually come with it. You only get the money. <laughs> and when you get your money, the money will run out. That's why I oftentimes tell people, Lord, I want you to give me favor and wisdom. Give me favor because when I don't have money, God can bless me without the money. Give me favor, give me wisdom so when I do have money, I know how to handle it. When I don't have money, I know how to handle it. Paul said to us that I've learned to be a base and I've learned to abound. He says, I've learned to be low, to be a base. And I've also learned to abound, to be high. Paul says to us tonight that we have to get to a point in our lives where we can do without things and still rejoice in the Lord. Too often people only rejoice in the Lord when they got it going on, when they got things going their way. But we ought to be able to rejoice in the Lord even when we don't have things going our way. We ought to be able to rejoice in the Lord. Paul says, I have learned. And when he says I've learned, what he's saying is that I didn't just get like this overnight. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to you tonight, my dears, you won't learn to abase and abound overnight. But it's a regular, everyday, consistent occurrence. You have to learn to do with what you have. God delivered me from people that got to have what the neighbors have. God delivered me from people who has to have what everybody else has. Bless the Lord for what you have and then do with 
what God has given you and then do what God has told you to do with it. Amen. Let's look at, at verses number uh, 14 through 19. This is Philippians chapter four, verses 14 through 19. Paul has already said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. Now he comes and I'm reading the New King James Version. He says, nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, how be it? Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared with me in my distress. This word shared means communicated. And when he talks about communicated, he's not, he's not talking about talking one to the other here. He says, you have shared with me. This word share, shared means you have communicated with me, which means that you fellowshiped with me. Mm -hmm. Not only have you fellowshiped with me, you have been a blessing to me. All this is in the word shared. Not only have you been a blessing to me, not only have you been in fellowship with me, not only have you communicated with me, you have also been giving unto me. You need to make sure that you find a way to give to the man of God. Paul has been talking throughout the book of Philippians about how this Philippian church continued to give to him. And he's saying, and by the end of the night, you will understand why Paul says it's so, such a valuable thing to give to the man of God. Paul says, you have communicated with me. You have shared with me. You have fellowshiped with me. You have been a blessing to me, so much so that you've given to me financially and also you've given food to me. Mm -hmm. You ought to find a way my dears, regardless of what church you attend, you ought to find a way to give to the man of God. Blessing to the man of God. You have to find a way to be a blessing to the man of God. Amen. So he says, he says, you've communicated to me. And then he goes on to say, you've communicated to me or shared with me and fellowship with me, even in my distresses. Even in my distress, you continue to share to me. This word distress means when I was under pressure. Distress means when I was burdened, when I was in trouble. Distress means when I was in tribulation. When I was persecuted. When I was afflicted. Even in my distress, you gave to me when I was in persecution. When I was in distress, when, when I was in tribulation, when I was in trouble. You see, some people don't like preachers that get in trouble. Some people don't want to even claim their preacher when he gets in trouble. It doesn't matter what kind of trouble he gets in. It doesn't matter whether he's guilty or not. People will begin to say things like this. That's your pastor. It ain't mine. I was talking to a young lady one day, and I asked her, uh, is that your pastor? And the pastor was in trouble. He, he's been in trouble a long time. He's been in trouble often. So she said, no, he ain't my pastor. I said, well, don't you go to that church? And I called the name of the church. She said, I go to the church, but he ain't my pastor. You see, people don't want to claim the preacher when he's in trouble. But when he's not in trouble, oh, that's my man of God there. God bless you, man of God. Paul says this Philippian church gave to him, they supported him, they fellowshiped with him, even when he was in trouble, in tribulation, even when he was being persecuted, they stood with him. Philippians chapter 4 is where we are. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 14, Paul, Paul says, when I was in distress, you supported me. Mm -hmm. And he's constantly thanking this church for being on his side and being on his team. Verse 15. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Paul says, now you Philippians church, these folk at the Philippian church, 
they share with him continually. They share with him when he was departing from Macedonia. No other church shared with him, but they kept sharing with him. God continued to bless the church that continues to bless the man of God. I said, God will continue to bless the church that continues to bless the man of God. Amen. Uh, Paul says, Paul says that, that no other church shared with me. When I was leaving and departing from Macedonia, no other church shared with me concerning giving. Look at what he's saying. Now, churches will share with you in fellowship. They'll pat you on the back, say, good service, good, good message, preacher. But he says, no other church shared with him concerning giving and receiving. You see, people will always give you a pat on the back when they won't give you financial gain. They won't give you a meal. But Paul says, this church at Philippi, they was about the business of God and supporting the man of God even while he was leaving, departing from Macedonia. It says this Philippian church continued to give unto him. They continued to give unto him. They continued right on giving unto him. Verse number 16. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again, for my necessities. It says, even in Thessalonica, you just kept sending aid to me. You didn't do it just one time. You did it over and over again. You, you did it over and over. You just kept giving unto me. Even in Thessalonica, you just kept giving. Even when I went to Thessalonica, you not only gave one time, you gave two times. In other words, you gave over and over and over again for my necessities. This word necessities is requirement. This word necessity is my needs. This word necessity, my duties and my, my business. God will continue to bless the man of God even if somebody don't give to him. <laughs> God will send even the raven to feed the man of God when people don't give to him. Paul says, even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. He's recalling how the church continued to bless him. I remember when I first came to New Beginning, and I might as well tell it, the, the, the bylaw said that there would be no love offering. There would be no pastor's anniversary. And I said to the brothers, brothers, you're telling the people who are being blessed by the man of God, they can't give to the man of God. What you're saying is you want a satanic church. Because what you're asking the people to not do is not of God. And if it's not of God, it's of Satan. It's of the devil. Mm -hmm. I thank God even today, even 15 years later, almost 16 years later, people of the New Beginning Church is still giving love off. People of the New Beginning Church is giving just to be giving to the man of God. Mm -hmm. I thank God that even 16 years later, when the other men said you should not give to the man of God, the great people at the New Beginning Church, is fine. they are finding a way. After they give their tithes and offering, they are finding a way to give to the man of God. Glory to the name of Jesus. It's biblical. It's biblical right here in the text. It says that it, even when I, I even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent aid unto me, you fulfill my necessities. He you gave toward my, my, my requirements. You know, sometimes people don't think the man of God need anything. <laughs> and, and then when they find out he needs something, then they say he got too much already. Let me just share with you. When the man of God goes to the dealership, his car costs just like yours does. When the man of God goes to the grocery store, his grocery costs just like yours does. Paul says, even when I went on a missionary journey, 
to Thessalonica, even when I went on a missionary journey to Macedonia, this church at Philippi kept right on giving. You see, there are some people who will give to the local church and they will give faithfully to the local church. They will give faithfully to the preacher as long as he is at the local church. But Paul says this church at Philippi not only gave to him while he was at the local church, they gave him, gave to him as he was on his missionary journey. Yes. We, ought to, we ought to value mission. We ought to value mission in such a way that we will give to the missionary. Give to the man of God, even when he's not at the home-based church. Yes. He, says, he says, when I was in Macedonia, when I was in Thessalonica, uh, you sent aid to me. You sent finances to me. You, you made sure my necessities were taken, taken care of. Verse 17. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. This is where the rubber really meets the road. Paul says, it's not that I was ever seeking a gift. He says, I, I wasn't looking for anything. He says, I wasn't asking for anything. I wasn't searching for anything. He says, verse number 17, not that I, I seek the gift. He said, I didn't seek it, seek it out. I didn't look for it. I didn't go asking for it. He says, not that I sought the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. This word fruit means that it's, a, it's harvest time and fruit is the results of the harvest. And if you don't plant anything, when it's harvest time, you can't get anything. You know, being raised in the country, backwoods of Mississippi, we planted butter beans. We planted rice, planted cotton. We, we planted food. We planted back blackberries and, and some blackberries grew wildly. But whatever we put in the hole, that's what we got out. When we went to the butter bean patch, we expected butter beans because we put butter beans in the hole. But it's one good thing about planting something. Whatever you put in the hole it's not just going to come up what you put in there. Whatever you put in the hole is going to bring a whole bushel of just what you put in there. So you can plant three butter beans, four butter beans, five butter beans into, into one hole. And ten times much will come up. So you have to watch what you sow. You have to be conscious about your sowing. You have to be intentional in your sowing. You have to make sure you sow, you sow good fruit in order for good fruit to come up. Because you're going to reap what you sow. And if you're going to reap what you sow, what you need to understand is as you reap what you sow, whatever you put out is what you're going to get back. Yes. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying to you is if you reap good, it's because you sowed well. If you reap bad, it's because you sold badly. You have to put it in the hole. You have to invest in it, and that's what will come out. Paul says, Paul says to us, verse number 17, he says to us, not that I seek the gift, I didn't go looking for it, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. He goes on to say in this verse that what you put in is what you get out. And not only is it true what you put in is what you get out, the bottom line is I'm looking forward to seeing what God will put in your account, mm -hmm. what God will, will give unto you, what God will, will, will replenish unto you, what's in your account, what's in your account. This, this word account is, is really a living voice. This word account means utterance. The word account means a decree. You see, some people think when they read this passage that this word account is an accounting word or a calculating word. This word account is, has nothing to do with, with, uh, with uh, an account as we know it, but it is speech, a living voice. It is the words 
As a matter of fact, it's reasoning, it's utterance. This word account simply says what God says about you. So it's God's utterance. It's, it is God's speech. It is God's reasoning about you. The question today is when it comes to giving to the man of God, when it comes to giving to the Lord, what will the, the Lord himself say about you? Will he say that you had much and you kept much? You see, some of the money, some of the stuff that you have, some of the food that you have is not just for you. It's for other folk, too. We need to understand that if you want to get out of trouble, if you want to get out of debt, you got to give your way out of debt. You got to give your way out. You have, you have to give your way out. One thing about the New Beginning Church that we've been able to do in the last 16 years is that when we get in trouble, we give. <laughs> When we're not in trouble, we give. When we fall short, we give. I remember several times they came to me and said, well, Pastor Davis, we didn't make budget this month. I said, well, write a check to the New Beginning Church and, and, and then take a check from the New Beginning Church, write a check to Holy Trinity. Did you hear what I said, Pastor? I said we didn't, we didn't make budget. I said, yeah, why are you at it? Write, write a check to the Word of Grace Church. He said, Pastor, have you lost your mind? I'm telling you that financially we came up short this month. I said, well, while why you had to write a check to, to New Covenant Church, and while, you, while you're going back there, write, write another $100 check to the Victory in Jesus Church. And so one day they got it. God said to me, from now on, when you tell me to write a check, or ask, ask of me to write a check, I'm just going to write the check because I've seen what God would do. We were in a bind with our church. We, we were in a bind. We were getting ready to refinance, and we wanted to refinance because we were going to knock off $350,000. Just talking about giving to the Lord and giving, giving as God has, has unctioned us and told us to give. If we could get, if we could get $10,000 in our account over and above what we had, we'll be able to financially refinance our building and we could drop that cost of that building by $350,500. But we needed five, we needed $10,000 to make it happen. We were in a bind because we didn't want to keep paying what we were paying and we wanted to take advantage of that $350,000. But I said to them, we have to give our way out of debt. I said to them that if we're going to get out of here, we're going to have to give our way out. So what I did, I said to pastor friends of mine all over the world, I need to come up with $8,000 more. I need your help. Send me $100, $150, whatever it takes. Those pastors begin to send. And then their churches begin to send money. They begin to send money. And at that time, we only needed uh, $6,500. $6,500 by the time that we got to that point. Don't you know, we needed $6,500, but because we have been sowing into other smaller churches for that period of time, God was able to bless us with $10,000. Mm -hmm. And he gave us more than what we asked for. He gave us more than we could dream of. Because we were giving. Let me tell you, if you're going to get something, you got to give something. Yes, he says he says to us in verse number 17 that God, he wanted to see the fruit that God was going to donate to your account. He wanted God to say great things about this church at Philippi. He wanted God to say that this church at Philippi was a giving church. I'm so glad that the New Beginning Church is a giving church. Sometimes people don't understand, but the fact of the matter is we give to ministry for the sake of blessing others and blessing ministry. Now, look, we're not going to just give to individuals just to be giving it to them because we don't have it like that. But one thing that we do know, when times get tough, we know how to give our way out of trouble, give our way out of distress. I'm saying to you today, you need to bless the church, bless the Lord's kingdom, bless the man of God. Paul says, this will be done for your account. Verse number 18. 
Indeed, I have all in a bound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling savor, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Look at what he says. He says that I've received from you by way of Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus was the runner. Epaphroditus was the contemporary of Paul that took him stuff from the Philippian church, took him the blessings that the Philippian church was blessing him with. So he says that I, I am full. I have, I have all in a bound. Paul says that, that I've, I have all in our bound. In other words, this word abound means that he super abound. This word abound means that he has increased. This word abound means that he has abundant. That's why when we pray, we ought to pray, Lord, thank you for our income. And Lord, thank you for our increase. Because see, the, the income is one thing. The increase is super and above the income. I mean, you ought, to, you ought to know that by now, God not only gives us what we need, he gives us what we want many times, and he gives us more than what we need. He, he super abounds is what this word, this word declares, that we have abundantly more than we can ask or think. Mm -hmm. It's because stingy people can't make it in the kingdom of God. Because when you give unto the Lord, and when you give the way the Lord would have you to give, the Lord is able to give back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will God allow other men to give into your bosom? <laughs> it, it, this word abound means to super abound, means to have increase. It means to have abundance. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm full. He says, I'm, I'm full. This word full means I'm satisfied. I've been fulfilled. God has given me fulfillment. And he says, I'm full. This word full means that I have been given all I need to execute this office. I've been given all I need to execute this ministry. He says, I'm full. I'm complete. I, I am perfected. He says, I'm satisfied. I've been fulfilled. Paul says, I'm full. I've received from Epaphroditus the things you sent, you sent from you. He, he brought these things to me, and the things you sent, the things that came from you, this is what they are. A sweet, a sweet smelling aroma. A sweet smelling aroma. So with the gifts that you've been giving me, or a sweet smelling aroma. This is this word, sweet smelling aroma. This word, this phrase rather, it, it, it means there's an odor. There, there is, there is a savor. A sweet smelling aroma. The closest description that that you can get to it on a natural level is when you walk in grandmama's house and she's cooking your favorite meal. It's a sweet smelling aroma. Mm -hmm. But from a spiritual aspect, you have to understand that there was a woman with an alabaster box one day. Jesus had healed her. Jesus had delivered her. Jesus had blessed her. She broke over this, open this alabaster box. And when she broke it op open to bless Jesus, it set off an aroma throughout the whole house. Mm -hmm. Paul says that your gifts that you sent me, the gifts that you've given me, is nothing less than a sweet-smelling aroma. It's an odor. It, it, is, it is a savor that has gone throughout the country, throughout your lives. And, and God is going to bless you because of this sweet-smelling aroma. He says, not only is it a sweet smelling aroma, in verse number 18, he says, an acceptable sacrifice. Mm -hmm. When we give, and, and here he's talking again about the giving to the man of God. 
when we give to the man of God, you and I both know it is a sacrifice. Sacrifice is something that you, that you really can't afford to give. Sacrifice is giving when it hurts. Sacrifice is giving beyond what you've set aside to give. I thank God for the good people at the, at the New Beginning Church that every now and then there's a sacrifice made for the sake of blessing their pastor. Mm -hmm. Every now and then there's somebody. Every now and then there's, there's, there are several persons that say, well, pastor, here are my tithes, here are my offering, and this is for you. It's a sacrifice. I understand it's a sacrifice. And I go out of my way, as Paul does, and I say, thank you for being a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's a sacrifice. And this, this word sacrifice means that, that something has become a victim. Sacrifice means that, that, that something has died or been given up for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't take it lightly. When Paul talks about a sacrifice, he, he, he talks in two different ways terminologies. Number one, whenever you talked about a sacrifice in the Old Testament, it talked about a dead sacrifice. It talks about animals dying for men. It talks about uh, animals pleading, animals' blood pleading the case for, uh, for their sins. And then he talks about us being a living sacrifice. And the reason why he talks to us about being a living sacrifice is because the greatest sacrifice has already been given. The greatest sacrifice is Jesus himself. Amen. That great sacrifice, when Jesus died on Calvary, he was the greatest sacrifice of all mankind. And Paul comes and says, because Jesus died as a dead sacrifice on Calvary, now we ought to become a living sacrifice we ought to walk with God. We ought to live for the Lord. We ought to become a living sacrifice. And whenever Paul and any of the writers talk about a sacrifice, that means that something has to be victimized. Mm -hmm. Something has to be given up. Something has to be killed. Jesus was killed on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. He became the ultimate sacrifice for all of mankind. And if Jesus gave his life on Calvary as the ultimate sacrifice, then we ought to be willing to be a living sacrifice that will live for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Paul says that this needs to be an acceptable sacrifice. The word acceptable means approved by God. Mm -hmm. Your gifts, your gifts to, to the Lord, your gifts to the men of God ought to be an approved, victimized sacrifice. It ought to be approved, acceptable, an acceptable sacrifice to the Lord. Then he uses this phrase, well-pleased, or well-pleasing. It ought to be well-pleasing, meaning that it ought to be full, in full agreement, fully agreeable. agreeable. This word, this, this phrase, well-pleasing, simply means that it is fully agreeable. Agreeable, It is fully agreeable, and look what comes after it, to God. God has fully agreed to us giving to the man of God. God has fully agreed to us becoming a living sacrifice and also a sacrifice in our giving. God has fully agreed <laughs> that we would have a sweet, a we would cause a a sweet smelling savor by giving to the man of God. You know, every pastor needs a pastor, and therefore, as I say to you, that you ought to give to your pastor, I ought to be giving to my pastor. Mm hmm. I, I ought to take him out to lunch every now and then. I ought, to, I ought to help him pay his tab every now and then. I ought, to, I ought to do some things for him that he doesn't expect to be done. It ought to be a sacrifice. And if I, if I were to tell him, my words would be something like this. I really can't afford to do it, but I'm going to do it because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it's a sacrifice for me. And this sacrifice become well-pleasing to God. God. Theos God. God, the supreme divin divinity. God, the exceeding one. God, the deity himself. God, the Godhead. The Trinity. God, the Father. God, the Son. And God, the Holy Ghost. Will be well-pleased as you give to the man of God. Paul is laying this thing out tonight. Verse number 19, Philippians chapter four, verse 19. He closes this pericope out with these words. And this become this has become several, several people favorite scriptures also. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Look at the pattern here. Paul says from verses 14 to verse number 18, he talks about the fact that men ought to give to the man of God. He says we ought to give to the man of God on a local level. Then when he goes on a missionary trip, we ought to give to the man of God. And he says that these things, this giving to the man of God, will be put on your account. I told you this word account means that we are giving to the man of God to see what God will say about us. The question is, what is God? This word account means what will God say about us? And then he goes on to say to the church at Philippi, you have given to me in my distress. You've given to me when I'm down and out. Some people like to kick on the preacher when he's down. Some, like, some people don't want to give to him because he's out. Paul says, in my distress, you chose to give to me anyway. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, verse 19, he says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He said this, 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 this supreme God, this, this deity God, this God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. He's the one that will supply all your need. He is a great supplier. Mm -hmm. He will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. This word, this phrase according to means down from. So God going to supply your need that come down from glory, down from heaven, down from God. He's going to supply your need mm -hmm. according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Let me go to verse number 20 and finish out this one. He says, now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul, Paul saw, says that, that because you are a giver, because you've been blessing the preacher, because things have been going well for you and been going well for the preacher through you, then God is going to supply your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. This word glory means his honor, his praise, his worship. Mm -hmm. God will supply your need through his riches. Let me tell you, we serve a rich God. Back home, we used to sing a song that says, you can't beat God giving no matter how you try. The more you give, the more he gives to you. If you don't believe me, just try. We need to understand that God has a way of blessing us when we bless others and God will supply your every need. This word need is your business. This word need is your requirement. This word need. Now, when he talks about need earlier, he says that you have supplied my need, my necessities. When he talks about need here, when he talks about returning blessings back to the saints, 
He's saying not only will he supply your business, not only will he supply your requirements, he's also going to supply your want. Paul says that he will supply your need, your wants, through his riches and glory. It says, now to God, to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. It says you ought to get happy. <laughs> The, 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 writer, the writer here gets excited. He gets happy about God. And you ought to get happy about God when you're talking about God. When you look back and see where God has brought you, you need to thank God one more time for blessing you with your need and your want. Now, now there are some people here tonight that has not only been blessed with their needs, they've been blessed with their wants. And, and then he says in verse number 20 that, that you ought to rejoice over the fact that you know God. You ought to rejoice over the fact, now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Paul rejoices. You see, some people have, have quoted this, this verse and they've said, my God will supply all my need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. That's true but you can't leave the rest of the pericope out. Paul, Paul says to us that you have given to me, you have communicated to me, you have blessed the man of God, and God is going to supply your need. I'm reminded of the woman that had just a little meal in a barrel. She and her boy are going to die after they eat this whole cake of bread. But the man of God came by. And when he came by, he said, before you die, make some meal and give me some drink. And he said, matter of fact, bring it to me first. And this woman made her cold cake of bread for this preacher first. And the Bible teaches that as she went into the meal barrel, and the more she dipped, the more God blessed her. The more she dipped, the more the, it rose from the bottom up. And the more she poured out, the more God blessed her. Amen. It's just a blessing to know that we have a God that is able to fill us up, to bless us well, even when we have given our sacrifice. Amen. There may be somebody listening to me today that need to know this God that I'm talking about. Amen. There may be somebody who's never trusted him as their savior. Let me tell you, if you trust in him for stuff and have not trusted him to be your savior, you're going to be most miserable. You need to trust Jesus Christ to be your savior. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to get to know Jesus right now. Jesus became the greatest sacrifice of all times. He died over 2,000 years ago. They buried him in a borrowed tomb early that third day morning. This sacrifice, Jesus got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. You ought to try Jesus. He is the one that can make things right for you. The text declares that God will supply your need, your necessities, your requirements, and your wants according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. You need to know this Jesus we're talking about. If you want to get to know him tonight, let me introduce him to you. He lived a simple life. He died. Mean men killed him. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. After he was dead, they laid him in a borrowed tomb. The borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. Don't you want to get to know him? Because if you get to know Jesus, you can go to heaven when you die. The door of the church is open. This is your moment. You can get to know Jesus right now. Right where you are. Just repeat after me. Bow your head. Repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. 
I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank God. We believe if you prayed that prayer with all sincerity that you're born again and that when you die, you'll go to heaven. And we believe that Jesus has saved you tonight. If you've received Jesus tonight, please inbox me and let me know that you received Jesus on this broadcast and we will rejoice with you. And if you need a church home, if anybody needs a church home, I, I want to recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and Jesus is the main attraction. Where Jesus is the captain of the ship. Where Jesus is the one that has saved our soul and made us whole. We're not a perfect church, but we're not a perfect people either. And neither are you. Why don't you hit me on the inbox and let me know that you'd like to be a member of the New Beginning Church. And we'll be glad to have you. And we'll rejoice together whenever we can get back together one more time. Hit me on the inbox and let me know that you've received him. And hit me on the inbox and let me know that you'd like to be a member of the New Beginning Church. And if you need prayer, hit me on the inbox and let me know that you need prayer. And we will be glad to welcome you to the New Beginning Church. It is now time for us to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial giving. Let's, let's focus on giving to the Lord. It's an opportunity to give to the Lord. The Lord has blessed us and the Lord continues to keep us. And we want to give back to the Lord. Those of you who are members of the New Beginning Church, uh, you need to give your tithes and your offering to the Lord. Those of you who are not a member and do not have a church home, you need to give tithes and offering to the Lord. Wherever you're being fed spiritually, then you need to give. And tonight you've been spiritually fed here at the New Beginning Church. You can give by two means. You can use our cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Soul. Cash tag NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls is our cash tag. NBC Souls is our cash tag. You can give by way of cash app, or you can mail your offering in to P.O. Box uh, 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. And we will receive your offering, make your checks payable to the New Beginning Church, and put on your offering what, what it is for. And as you do your cash app, Make sure you put on your, your cash app what that offering should go to, and we'll be glad to receive it. Thank you for joining us here tonight, and you can look forward to seeing us on Sunday morning at these same stations. You can see us on Sunday morning and rejoice with us <clears throat> on these same stations. We'll be glad to have you a part of our Bible study, our Sunday school, rather, at 9 a.m., and our Sunday worship service at 1045 a.m. You can join us any Wednesday at 7.15, 7.20 p.m. for our Bible study. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiremile Road. Uh, please feel free to, to hit me on the inbox and let me know how you enjoyed this service. And, and whatever you do, uh, hit the bell so you can be notified whenever we come on. And you can start your your block party or your watch party or whatever party you want to start and join us at 9 a.m. on Sunday for Sunday school. You can join us at 1045 a.m. for worship service and you can join us at 720 p.m. on Wednesday for our Bible study. Also, our youth are doing Kahoot. Our youth are doing Kahoot for their Sunday school and so no one is left out. Please inbox me and let me know what you would like to be a part of. Thank you again for coming. Thank you for being a part of our service. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for who you are, for what you do. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your word. We thank you, Lord, that we are, we are those who, who will set godly examples, those who you will supply our needs according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. 
Amen and amen and amen. Thank God for, for you joining us and please come and be with us on Sunday morning, 9 a.m. We'd like to see you. 1045 a.m. We'd like to hear from you. Thank you now. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.